Yuval Benitzak. He is the CEO, CEO of Social Bakers. Social Bakers provides social and digital media analytics products and services. It conducts analysis of all aspects of social media platforms through benchmarking, competitive reporting, tracking, and measuring social media metrics. Now, competitive reporting, if you are somebody like me who barely finished high school, do not feel intimidated, do not feel stupid, I'm gonna ask him what the hell does mm -hmm. that mean? Don't feel, I'll ask all the stupid questions so you don't have to. All right. <clears throat> Um, he has over 20 years of experience in business and technology, frequent, uh, frequently uh, as a commentator in media, speaking on topics like the future of mobile, security, privacy, consumer dynamics, and disruptive innovation. Uh, served as a CTO um, <clears throat> at Outbrain, CTO at ABG Technologies, and CTO of Finhan. Uh, founded the leader in web application security, Cavado. And uh, we started using Social Bakers, uh, you know, recently at the Shark Group, and are, we truly are blown away by um, all the assets and all the things and information that uh, they have provided us. I'm going to ask him some, some questions that you may not want to ask when you're out there, uh, you know, uh, in the world, because people say, oh, you didn't know that, or you may not know how to frame it, but at least we're going to ask the question. Now, start getting a, a pen and a pad or on your, on your computer and writing down some of these things so that you can... Uh, you know, walk in the room and sound like you know what you're talking about, or at least walk in the room and ask the right questions. Hey, thank you very much for the introduction. Ah, no problem. It is my pleasure. How are you doing today? Ah, uh, very well. Hope everyone's safe and healthy on your end as well. Where are you working out of? Where's that space right now? I'm in our offices, and as you can see, it's pretty empty. I mean, people working from home, we're left with a beautiful office available for everyone. But I'm connecting now from uh, Prague, beautiful Prague in the Czech Republic. I think that sets, sets up a, a, a great part of the stage right now because I was, people may have thought you were United States, but you're an international, um, you know, uh, company, of course. And, uh, you know, I read your, I read your, your bio and uh, I'm sure that was just the tip of the iceberg, but it shows that you've been in this industry for so many years, so um, 20 years, so... You know, a lot of people, when, when did social media really come around? Uh, oh, was MySpace the first social media platform, really, that everybody knew of? Uh, it started much earlier. I mean, uh, I remember myself as a teenager connecting through my old computer uh, once internet became available at home and doing just some text messages and IRC channels. Um, I think social started there. It was just boring text, no videos, no images, uh, but the passion you have to speak with people, to connect with people, to share your thoughts, um, started a long time ago, just in 20, uh, 2004, 2007, where all the social media channels that we know today, that's where they started, the YouTube, the Facebook, the Twitter. Um, MySpace was just like a milestone in this journey, but uh, social started long before that. Well, I love, I love hearing that, you know, because it's like you knowing the fundamentals of it from, uh, you know, Fashion is pretty simple, you know, it, 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 it grows and it changes, but really the fundamentals of putting a garment together and, and you know, and all those things are, are the fundamentals are easier. And, uh, you know, listen, when I first started in fashion, the internet wasn't out and I had to go and mail or do whatever and send my designs over to China or, or to other cities. And um, now, of course, you can just get on 5G and do it so... The delivery of it was much is much faster today, but the fundamentals of it on how to to get raw goods and what we call them gray goods, and then we now you, however, I, you in technology way different, right? I mean, it's like the difference of when we were playing Atari and we were playing those those two tennis balls like that to where we are today. Um, technology so you... definitely enabled that. I mean, technology. Uh, I think if, if you look when Facebook really start to, to jump, uh, it's when mobile become available. 2005, 2007, the world is starting to purchase all these beautiful devices. iPhone is a blockbuster. Uh, 3G and later 4G enable us to have this live stream. It wasn't available when you started your business or when I uh, you know, work for other companies. 
And for businesses, it's super important, super valuable, this social media, because it gives you very simple access to billions of users that otherwise you probably never reach or you will never, never be able to tell your story and, and share whatever you, your products are. And, uh, and we're seeing a lot of those uh, consumer businesses that are taking advantage of, of social media in order to understand their audiences, in order to reach them, tell the story, engage with them, and eventually, yeah, to sell the product. But it's done very differently as the traditional marketing when you, you know, have a billboard in the highway or you put an ad on a newspaper. You don't really know who is seeing it, what do they feel about it, what do they have to say. Uh, and I think social is really, I mean, we are very pleased to have social these days, uh, thanks to all the technology and all the enhancements. So if someone is, if someone is uh, cultivating a strong presence, you know, for their business online, what would you say are the most important metrics that they should be monitoring on their social media account? The one thing that a lot of people miss when they go on social is to know who is their audience, who are the people there, what's their interest, what type of content they engage with. Before you spend your budget on advertisement, before you take a nice photo of your product and put it out there, you need to know who are these people, which channel you should actually meet them. Is it YouTube? Is it Instagram? Should it be Twitter? Uh, so looking and doing this audience insight and, and learning about your audience is the number one or the first step I would advise to all those uh, marketers and all those businesses and trying to see how you can expand and how you can increase the number of people that you constantly engage with. The second, um, I would say, metrics I would look on is the engagement with the content that I put out. So posting or broadcasting live, uh, depending each channel has their own format, um, is very important. But what businesses value the most is the engagement. The fact that I put my content out and no one uh, comments about it, no one engages with it, there's no love from my audience about the content I put there, has no value. The whole value that the business needs is to engage with people, is to tell your story, is to tell the story of your product, is to understand, do they like it? Maybe they don't like it. Maybe they have a different uh, opinion. And the third well, part, yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, go ahead. I want to hear the third point. Go ahead. And the third part is obviously in terms of the care. You need to care about these people. They may purchase your product and they have a question or there is a problem with the product. You need to remember that the, the relationship and the user experience doesn't end when you're making the sale. It's, it's the experience after. And people expect you to be there all the time and respond in five seconds, not in five days. So this metric is also very important, is how quickly you respond to these people and what's the sentiment of that uh, user that you engage with. Wait, let me ask you something. So, but does that, you separate that cell that from your business to your personal. So I'll give you an example. Um, <clears throat> a friend of mine out here in America named D-Nice, he did this live DJ stuff and 25,000 people were on it the first time. And he was like, okay, that's great. But he was doing because he really cared. And he couldn't care of more people coming on. And sooner or later, he caught on in two or three weeks or two or three days. And it became uh, uh, like 500,000 people on it. Now, because he was caring about what he was doing, he didn't care of more people on because he just felt whether it was 25,000 or 25 people, he loved what he was doing. And that organic expression of that grew it. However, what about in business? When you put out a post and you want to get X amount of people to click on your stuff or just to ask more information or just say, I like that information. Thank you for giving it to me. You made me smarter. You know, do you keep, at, at what stage do you keep doing it? Because you know that it's the right thing to do. You care about your people, but you're not getting the type of engagement, but maybe they're looking at it. Maybe they're looking at it. They're not making, because all your posts should not be purchases. Maybe they're looking at it and it's, it's, it's reinforcing something different. So sometimes when I take a picture of me speaking in audiences, I know a lot of people don't reply because they're going, well, is this Damon bragging or is this Damon trying to inspire us? Or is, is he just, he's being, you know, he's being, um, uh, he's continuing his communication that he loves to get out there and speak and empower people. On the flip side though, even though a lot of people don't respond to that, 
I end up getting a lot of people calling me saying, when can you come speak for me? So the, the analytics aren't always necessarily there in regards to clicks and everything else. They may be there because somebody is just following you and loving you. And, they, and you're just every day or every Monday, you show them how to wake up and put on the best makeup they can. Even though you don't have a makeup line, they believe in you. So when you do launch, you know, they, uh, you already have a built-in audience that is uh, really attracted to you. So I'm just trying to understand how do you do it where you're, you're counting every penny and how do you do it where you're organically saying, I just need to do this, or is there a mixture? Yeah, in marketing, it's called a funnel. You first need to build the first layer. In the funnel, and you can definitely build that with your organic content. Start to get people to listen to your story. Start to get people, uh, you know, love your music or love your product and, and start to build that audience and try to understand what level of engagement you manage to get them. Either it's through uh, instant messaging, either it's through the likes or through the comments or, or, or they're sending you direct message and try to learn from them what really resonates and only then try to amplify that message once you know what do they like, what type of content they engage the most, and how would you position that message out? Only then put your money behind that. But don't make like a big bang. Don't just take you know, a lot of money, put behind one thing. Right. The market is dynamic. Things are moving very fast. Do small iterative tests that you're learning from every test. See the results, measure it, learn about it. Do multiple variants of that. And once you start to see a success, then amplify, then invest more. Um, trying to put everything behind one thing, it's very risky and usually doesn't work. So I, I think that's a good point because I happen to be a huge advocate for animal welfare and I love bringing the attention to um, saving animals and how brilliant animals are and, and how a lot of times they, they, they're there for us, mm -hmm. you know, um, but yeah. they can't protect themselves. But I used to do posts about, hey, look how, basically look how smart these animals are doing something. And people liked it a little bit. It was cool. But I realized if I just twisted a little, put the same video out and say, isn't entrepreneurship something like this? You know, when you see the animals figuring yeah. things out, boom, right? People, you know, so my message got across. I'm not selling anything, but my message got across of you could just relate to this as an entrepreneur as well as look how amazing these little, you know, these little creatures are, you know, that, you know, you know and how precious they are. And I think that's what you're saying. Um, if I would have put, if that happened to be a product or a, a concept I was putting together to try to market, if I would have put it all behind the first one, I would have got discouraged and never got to the okay. second one. And it's important right. on social media specifically to, to have it conversational. I mean, don't just try to broadcast the message in one direction and hope that the world is going to listen and follow to, to that message. Try to inspire, try to encourage, try to... Uh, open the conversation with your audience, they will respond back and they will engage with you. And I think that's the best relation any business needs to have with their, uh, with their audience, with the people out there on the digital platform. You know, let, and I, that's a good point. Let me ask you something because when I was, in, when I was reading your bio and your background, there were some words in there like um, competitive reporting. That's something that social bakers do. Um, what is competitive reporting? Every business in every region will have a competitor, someone that you would consider they compete with what I do. And it's a good source to learn what works for that competitor or actually what doesn't work for them. So if I can uh, measure the performance of the content or the level of engagement or the sentiment that the audience of that business is showing, I can learn a lot. Are they a threat to my business? Or actually they are doing bad and they're losing people and people don't like them? Every market I'm, I'm entering with my business, I want to know who is there? Who is getting the, 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 the traction? Who, are, who is giving the voice and directing people? Because then I will set my strategy to that. Uh, I will use competitors reporting also to learn if my competitor initiate a campaign, how do I know if it's successful? I mean, the fact that a lot of people liked it doesn't mean much. Maybe you just put a lot of money behind it and just pushing those lights. But I want to know is it do they get a positive response? Do they actually see follow up? Do people share those kind of posts? Does it matter to people? So for me as a business, it's very, very important to set my plans. And I need those reporting because 
on social media, there's so many businesses and there's so many channels that I need to track. Uh, I need a tool to bring all this data for me and tell you what's, how good looks like and how my competitor looks like so I can adjust my, uh, my business plan. I can adjust my marketing plan uh, according to that. So we're seeing very large brands. I mean, the best beauty, sports, automotive brands, but also the smaller ones that are more regional looking on those competitor reports and really learning, uh, you know, what works and how to set their plan. It's very, very valuable. If you don't have ba- <clears throat> if you don't have access to their back end, you're 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 just giving reports off of you're seeing the amount of feedback, you're seeing the amount of reposts, you're seeing that, and you're 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 grabbing that of uh, maybe ten or fifteen or a thousand, and you're basically saying here's where we see things are working. People are not engaging with these people. People are engaging with these people. Is that is that what what you're ba- you're, you're basically doing? You're, you're using the uh, public information that is available across the different social channels. You can slice it by the territory that your business operates or the verticals that you operate. And you can see together how this market is now trending in, I don't know, call it in, in California or in uh, London or in whatever is the region that you operate. And you also want to see the sentiment. Are people happy with the message or uh, on the new product? Is there an excitement on the new cars that will just... Uh, you know, released or, or new records of, uh, of a musicians, do they like it? Or do you start to see some, some uh, you know, negative comments? It's very important if you want to track your competitors and you want to take their market share, uh, this is the piece of information that's very valuable. Is there also ways that, because I, I know there's a lot of people who create brands and they say, you know what, I don't, I don't care about the competitors, but I see that this market is not being served. I know, I know somebody who said, you know, this is probably about four years ago. He said, I realize lingerie is one of the top things um, that is, uh, you know, looked up on the Internet. So he created not a lingerie company he makes himself. He just funneled a bunch of lingerie companies together. Um, and he basically had, uh, you know, affiliate marketing of the best places to or the kind of lingerie you're looking for. So can you do things like that if I said... I have a couple of dollars, but I don't want to make anything. I'm not an influencer. I just want to know that everybody right now was looking for, because uh, everybody's home, they're looking for do-it-yourself this, so whatever the case is. And can you point me in that direction? Yes, of course. There is uh, something called social media listening. You basically want to track what is the conversation out there. And if you want to focus on a specific topic, you want to see what's the volume, who are the ones that setting the tones who are the ones that are, uh, you know, directing the audience toward what's good, what's bad. Uh, you want to engage with them. And it doesn't need to be paid. It doesn't need to be influencers that you need to pay, you know, big dollars for, uh, for, for them to endorse you. Uh, this is available. So with social media listening, you can focus on a specific topic. You can focus on specific territories and basically get the heartbeat and see what's going on there, how things are working, where should I start? And then once you identify, um, you know, a couple of profiles that are interesting, maybe some businesses, um, what we're seeing now in the market, influencers, mainly the smaller one, actually, are the ones that are driving the conversation. They don't cost much. But to find which one is relevant for you, to find the ones that, you know, already have an audience that is the type of audience that you want to engage or sell your product to, this is something you also need to analyze because everyone with, you know, a few tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of followers on social doesn't mean that they have the audience that you want to reach. Uh, learning about that information and, and picking the ones that are relevant for you is also uh, something very important on social. Because you can, and we've seen a lot of brands doing, you know, big mistakes and picking the wrong profile that, that eventually end up with people sending the wrong message. And it's hard to recover after that. If, if somebody right now is watching, you know, I have a lot of Laura CEOs, I have, and then I have people who are working at home and they're just trying to figure themselves out and they don't have a lot of money and they're just trying to figure it out. If, if they're right now at home and they may not have, uh, you know, money to do all this right now, what are the first things they should do to get to the step to talk to, you know, people like you when they're saying, all right, I can now invest in stuff like that? Start to uh, do your research at home to find out uh, what is the conversation you want to be part of. Try to find the type of content that those people are engaging with. Try to see what's your, what's your message, what, what do you want to communicate, 
and finding which of the digital channels, which of the social media channels, those conversations are actually happening. And then uh, I think we can have a conversation and validate in terms of uh, you know, who are the competitors in the region. We can assess what is the budgets that you should have if you want to reach whatever are your goals are. Um, and it will really help you using data to prepare your plan and in order to see the result pretty quickly because in marketing, it's very easy to waste money. It's very easy to put a budget behind something and kind of like in a, in a casino, hope that it will gonna work. Today on social media and, and digital channels overall, there is data and there are those, those smart algorithms that help us to know what, uh, or, or to let's say, help us to decrease the risk of making mistakes and increase the probability for success. And start at home, do your research, come with some conclusion, then have a conversation uh, with a vendor, or come to Social Baker and we'll help you to understand based on the data, is that the right direction, where to amplify, what type of content to create, and you will see the results uh, following. And that's exactly what we're seeing many of our customers. Okay, well, all the best, man. Thank you for all the information. And I want people to keep following you on Social Baker to, to see what, um, you know, what ways that they can keep improving their communication, everybody. Thank you so much.